So, the other day I was having a bit of a chinwag with one of my 17 Patreon supporters. <laughs> Thank you to everyone who supports me on Patreon. Uh, but yeah, I was having a bit of a chinwag and we're talking about laptops actually. It uses a, like a touchscreen laptop. And um, talking about something completely different. But he was mentioning how he uses his, uh, his touchscreen laptop to send information to a client. So he'll do a print screen like this of, uh, of a model. And then he'll use his touchscreen to, to create notes for a client. So, I don't know, like info required, you know, you, he wouldn't use a mouse like I am right now. But uh, And then he would just sort of point things out and then do dimensions like this and yada, yada, yada. And then he'd write a few notes up here. And then he would save that out as a JPEG, email that off to the client to get a message across. The client would then look at it, feedback to him. It's a familiar story. A lot of people do it. There's nothing wrong with it. Except it's 2018, mate. We don't do this anymore. So I was looking at him going, what what, 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 what? what? Come on. We could do this better, mate. Take a look at this. Mind blown. I was like, that's a good idea for a video. So there are other ways of doing what I'm about to show you. But it's just a nice, quick, simple way of getting a message across. And it makes you look professional. It's a lot better... It looks better on you if you would do this this way. So it, I'm using Inventor 2019. You can do this dating back to 2017. Beyond 2016, you can't do this. But in Inventor, go to the Annotate tab, and then you've got a whole bunch of 3D annotations. They're not specifically intended for this purpose, but you can use them for this. So we can say, drop a dimension down on here. And this is just whatever you want. Press space bar, you can change the angle of the dimensions. But this is just creating notes and information that you want to show somebody else. So length is that or whatever. Press return, leader text. You can drop a leader down here and say whatever. This slot needs feedback, whatever. Just keep on building up notes and stuff for, for the client. Like that. You can have as many on them as you want. You can even create general notes up here at the top, like a, a table or just general notes. Uh, please let me know, etc., etc., blah, blah. Uh, and then you just build it up. Get what you want to show the client. And if you're thinking at this point, we'll just do a screen print of that. It looks dead neat and tidy. Oh, <laughs> no, mate, no. No, we can go one step better than that. What you then do is click this button here, 3D PDF. I hit that. And then I'm going to use the blank template. This is going to burn this model and the text into a template. You've got other options. Click the little button there, and you've got four of them. Uh, the other ones have got, like, borders around them, Autodesk borders with properties around them and stuff, which is nice, but I just like a nice blank one. And then uh, select this button here. Yeah, drop your PDF onto the desktop. Call it, I don't know, we can call it whatever you want, to be honest, like client, uh, client A feedback or something. Click publish and it burns all of this and the model into a PDF file and then opens it up an Acrobat reader. PDF's tiny, it's like a couple of hundred KB. Well emailable, mate. Well emailable. For some reason, I don't know why, some shenanigans going on, but Adobe don't seem to trust Autodesk because Acrobat reader opens this up and it's like, this looks well dodge, mate. Uh, so you've got to select trust this document. And then once you do that, look at that. Look at that, mate. That is far more professional than sending a screen print with a, a load of hand squiggled text to your client. So you've got your notes up there at the top. You've got the model. The client can then use this left mouse button to spin the model around. There's all your notes and all your leaders that can zoom in. The, there's no IP here. There's there's no I properties with, with anything that's going to allow them to reverse engineer it. It's just a PDF. But they can, uh, they can change the lighting. They've got different lighting styles up here. They've got different view styles like illustration, wireframe and whatnot. They can even do slices, mate. So they can go into uh, create a slice, go to the properties of the slice, align to a face, and then go boosh. Look at that. They can slice through it. It's not the most interesting part, but whatever. You, you get the point. You get the picture. So, uh, yeah, there you go. You can send that over to the client. And then I assume, I'm not an, I'm not a PDF expert, but there's a comment button here where I'm assuming they can write comments down and then send that back to you. And then you've got your, this feedback loop going on. And that just, it just looks a lot better for you than just sending over a, a picture. And, uh, yeah, it makes you look a lot more professional, which everybody wants to be. <laughs> it's, it's like that's the goal in life. But, uh, yeah, there you go. That's uh, communicating information with the client using 3D PDF and Inventor's Annotations. Once you've sent them that PDF 
and you're done with it, you can just come into your annotations and just get a shot of them if you want to, once you're done with them, and then crack on designing. It does, Inventor does have other ways of communicating information with a client. You've got these shared views here, which requires everyone to have Autodesk accounts, and it's a bit more of a chew on to set up, but you invite people with an Autodesk account and you can send shots of what you've got on screen right now in session and they can, you get this like comment stream down here. So there are other ways of doing it, but that PDF is just a nice offline way of sending someone some information. It makes you look pretty good at the same time, mate. So thank you very much to uh, my Patreon guy for uh, for conjuring up this idea for me. Uh, anybody else interested uh, to being one of the, the 18th... <laughs> 18th patreon supporter on youtube uh by all means uh, information and links are in description if you want to help support the channel on patreon uh, i'm possibly going to do a separate video on this because uh, I, I need some ideas on on patreon it's been running for a couple of years and i understand there's like absolutely zero incentive to support the channel on patreon so i'm kind of open to ideas on on what i can do to kind of incentivize people to do that and make something of it because at the moment it's just sat there kind of doing nothing so uh, I might make a separate video on that. But uh, if you want to help out, information and uh, links are in the description. Thank you very much. I hope you found this useful. If you do it, like and all that, and all the YouTube stuff, subscribe and blah, blah, blah. You probably already are subscribed, but uh, you know how it goes. Thanks very much. See you in the next one. Toot.